is collected in Mishawaka, um, so it, it seems like only appropriate that Mishawaka should keep that money and then decide how fairly to, if, if in fact they can make their case, which I don't know if they can or not. I've never seen anybody from the Visitors Bureau. And I've been around this town for almost 60 years. So I don't know how appropriate that is. They'll probably come by when you're, when you're downstate. Probably. <laughs> but I, I just don't know how appropriate it is. And I think, you know, I'm parochial and I admit it. Um, I, no. I think. Yeah, <laughs> I think you've written editorials about it. In fact, but, I have actually. But but I, I just think you know if a million dollars is collected in Mishawaka, and we have needs in Mishawaka, very conservative community, both Democrat and Republican. When we spend money, we spend it appropriately. That's why we don't have some of the problems that other communities have. And so, did you get any support from the mayor for, on this? I uh, know I never talked to the mayor. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have a, let's go to the phones. We have a call from Muhammad. Go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. <clears throat> My, uh, I personally am against um, having welfare recipients take drug tests because the costs outweigh the benefits of a, such a program. So I would like each person on the show to tell me what they think about this and why they think that. Okay, thanks. Uh, I was going to get to that a little bit later in the show, but since he brought it up, there is, there is a bill that would require, would establish a pilot program in three counties for drug testing of welfare recipients. It died on and the, the bill, committee. It yes. died in committee. The died, we're, happy it, to, yeah. we're happy to announce yeah. it's dead. Right. I understand. Well, I'm very disappointed to announce that it's dead. <laughs> I think it's something that has a great deal of support from a lot of the public. Okay, well, let's, you, since you brought that up, go ahead. Why do you think that this is necessary? And what did, did you, what did you think about Ryan Dvorak's amendment, which also required state legislators to take drug testing? I thought, um, well, first I'll address the, the concept of the bill of drug testing. This is not to get people that are on welfare. What this is to do is to try to lead them to a better place, lead them out of bad habits. And the last thing we want to be doing as, as the public and setting public policy that encourages people to continue bad habits. And I think this should be looked at as much about helping these people out of a terrible habit as much as it is trying to protect the public from funds from going to funding such, uh, such habits. As far as the legislators being drug tested, I thought it was a great concept. The way that First Amendment was put together was done in a way that uh, would have killed the bill. And so we actually brought another amendment the following session day and uh, strip that language out, but put the same concept back in, something that we could support that would not jeopardize the future of the bill. I think this is something that uh, has broad support among the public. We shouldn't be paying to continue people's uh, bad habits, drug, uh, drug addict addiction habits, and we should be trying to lead them out of those types of habits. Karen, do you agree with everything that Tim said? Nothing. I agree with nothing that Tim <laughs> said. I, I, I'm a, well, I, I, and I don't, I don't mean that, uh, sir. Sarcastically, oh but sure you do, but that's okay. I, I think <laughs> I think it's it's one of those sort of uh, very naive things to think that you can do social engineering um, and and by this kind of a program. Um, you know, it didn't work in Florida, and it cost them a lot of money, and they got nowhere. Uh, and if you want to look at where the real sort of wait, the mantra is waste, fraud, and abuse, which seems to be thrown out there a lot. Um, if you want to look at where that is in, in, in the welfare system, uh, the biggest place where we have, we have Medicaid Fraud Investigation Unit in the state of Indiana. Uh, the Medicaid fraud uh, or errors that is done by the medical profession um, brings back about three hundred million dollars every year. Uh, now that's that, that's not just Indiana. Um, that's where the error is. And if they want to spend um, time and effort to pick up fraud and abuse and and error in the in the welfare system, it ought to be there. One of the complaints about this bill was that it was going to cost a million dollars or so to set it up. It cost more than it, it cost so much money. It made it, it made it prohibitive. I think. See, I don't personally agree with drug testing. Period, uh, unless there's probable cause. And and 
I think that if, if in fact, you're going to do random drug testing, I, I assume I would rather they have everybody be tested, including the employees working there, the recipients, everybody. I don't have a problem taking a drug test. But when it's random in nature and it can be used as a punitive tool, which is what the case of this bill was, in my opinion. And, and so, you know, the, the, the drug testing is, is an invasion of my privacy. And I think uh, it's, um, from that reason, constitutionally, I think there's a question. And I think there was legal issues in Florida that caused it to, besides the, the ability not to work properly, uh, caused it to go down. But it's, it's uh, something that, that the Republicans, and it's, I, I don't know that any Democrats supported it. They might have. I don't know. But it's, it's one of those things that just, uh, it's just punitive. Let me respond to that if I can. Actually, I believe the support for it passing out of the House was 79. So there were a number of Democrats that supported it. And I think that is reflective of the fact that it's a concept, an idea that the general public supports. Um, our, the, the author of this bill, Representative Judd McMillan, a freshman, one of the brightest uh, young attorneys in, in the General Assembly now, specifically worked to make this bill so that it would meet constitutional muster, that it would not fall on the same rocks that the legislation in Florida and elsewhere fell on. But as far as taking drug tests, you know, I used to work in RV factories and at least once, or twi and once a year I was being drug tested. You know, when I got the job, I had to get a, pass a drug test. It's something that's extremely common in the, in the private, private world to take and get drug tests. And I knew people that failed their drug tests and lost their jobs. I knew other people that had the false positive thing going on, but it worked out. They got their job, uh, got, didn't lose their job. And so it, it's something that we expect. It's very common in the private sector. Why can't we do it for, for the government handouts for that welfare to do the same thing? One of the complaints was that there's not, not very many uh, agencies or facilities that can help people who have drug addictions overcome them. Isn't, wasn't that one of the arguments against right, this We don't fund that. The funding for the drug assistance and, you know, and, and all of those programs has been cut so much in the past couple of years that, you know, Craig is right, th this is punitive. And the other interesting thing is, you know, the federal government does not allow this for Medicare, does not allow it for Medicaid. Uh, it was sort of an overlooked issue that, that um, that they didn't put that prohibition in there for TANF, which is temporary assistance to needy families. Most of those people are not on there for long periods of time. Um, it, you know, it, it's supposed to be temporary. And uh, the federal government didn't put that restriction in there, and so now you've got a bunch of people who, who, who uh, you know, it may be a do-gooder kind of, of um, uh, impetus to do this. Let's get these people off drugs. But really what it's going to do, because there's nowhere else for them to help, to get help, uh, it's just going to cut their benefits. And, and it's going to affect their children. Well, I was going to ask about that. What about the kids who are Well, it's the same you know, thing <laughs> if I'm going to get a job, or I have a job, and I fail a random drug test, I'm going to lose the job. Is that going to affect my children? Well, sure it is. Why shouldn't we expect the same standard for people who receive welfare benefits from the, the government? The, the, folks, the folks on welfare in this state are, 85% of them are old, disabled women and children. So, you know, if you want to be punitive, that's fine. People like you can be punitive. I just prefer not to be and never have voted to be that way. And, and, um, I, and I, don't, I don't care what my friend over here says. It's punitive, pure and simple. And it, it's not cost effective, and, and the Senate killed the bill. Two Republicans helped kill the bill in the Senate. I think the bill is, is very fair, and it, and it makes sure that the state is not setting public policy that Karen, encourages. Do you think it's and, and I don't mean to cut you off, I'm yeah. sorry. Yes. Okay. Well, so, and the other, so let's, the other let's, thing, let's just move on. Well, 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 one more comment is that, you know, this Judd McMillan kid from wherever he's from, you know, he's a lawyer. Um, it, they talk about constitutional. The only person that can make a constitutional argument is somebody who wears a black robe. Legislators can't make constitutional arguments. Well, because, well why were you saying it would have constitutional I, questions I, earlier? I, well, I do. It, I think it does, but I'm not. Like, there's constitutional judgment. Then. No, I'm not. He was doing it on the floor as it relates to the bill. I was making a statement about drug testing in general. 
And you have to understand is this guy is no judge. He can't determine what is constitutional and what's not. And he can work behind the scenes and in between the lines and make all this work according to him, but he doesn't count. But when I, when I was sworn into office, I took the Constitution and I swore to uphold the Constitution as a legislator. So we should certainly be looking at our legislation to make sure that it, it will uh, stand in a court of law and will be constitutional. We can't make the final judgment, but we should certainly be looking at that aspect. That's one oh, of the absolutely. Problems. I think we should absolutely be looking at that aspect, and, and which is why I'm so pleased that they offered the creationism bill in, in, in the Senate. That was certainly constitutional. It's already been ruled by the Supreme Court that you can't do that. But it doesn't matter. They do it anyway. Right. Well, <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. No, no. I, I was gonna. I wanted to get to that, and now we'll get she's to been, it now. She's been very polite. I would call them all right-wing nuts, but that's just me. <laughs> Bosma, Speaker Brian Bosma announced last week that the House will not hear that Senate bill on creationism, uh, bec uh, and one of the one of the uh, amendments to this bill re required that the the schools, if if the bill would pass, <clears throat> not only teach creationism from the Christian concept, but also from Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, and Scientology. And and one of the Bosma's statements, I think, no, I'm sorry, it was uh, uh, House Education Chairman Robert Boehning from Indianapolis who said that he believed multiple, multiple faiths requirement made the proposal unworkable because it would be almost impossible to find teachers who would know enough about origin belief from so many religions. So was that, was that an amendment that was intended to, to kill the bill and was it successful? The amendment was intended to kill the bill. Uh, it was offered by, by uh, our minority leader, Vi Simpson, uh, and that's precisely what it was intended to do. It was there to show that, look, you know, the people who espouse creationism are not the only uh, religion in the world, and they're, you know, they're, they're one of many. Uh, it was intended to show that this entire uh, replacement of science by religion uh, should not, you know, it, it's unconstitutional and, and, we, and we had this argument 200 years ago. Thomas Jefferson, you know, gave us... Separation of church and That's state. right. And, and, and we fought wars for that. Well, let me, the bill is dead because it had a lot of issues. I think especially our leadership in the House recognized it, signed it to Rules Committee, so it's done. But as far as the concept, I find it interesting to see the reaction against allowing uh, diverse views into our classrooms. I think having a, a positive, animated discourse and getting our, our students' minds thinking about some of these various philosophical questions is really important. Uh, as far as the science of it, I don't view, view uh, a, a religious concept of believing in a creator God as being anti-science. I think they can work together very cohesively. I really think this is a difference of philosophies of creationism versus Darwinism. Not evolution, not necessarily evolution science, but Darwinism, or Darwinism in particular that says science can only look to chance and anything that does not look to chance or anything that does not um, disallow uh, a, a deity in the process is not science. I think that uh, allowing a deity into the process, allowing a creator into the process, does not mess up our science. And I think it, is a gr it would be a great thing for our students to discuss, to come to a conclusion, to recognize that there are different opinions. Well, on first it. of all, we're talking, we're, opinions, we're, we're, yeah, we're talking about public schools here, which you never attended. And, and I don't, if I wanted to send my children to, to school to learn a religious belief, I would have sent my kids to Queen of Peace Church. I didn't. I sent them to public schools so they could learn a secular kind of, of education and be broad-based. And the religious training has to happen in the home and in the church, not in our public schools. And for folks like you to encroach on my right to choose not to have my kids indoctrinated in a public school is, is wrong. See, and that's great. what... There is indoctrination happening there with, no, the, with the perspective of Darwinism. It says that we all came from, from apes. Is that, does that not deny what Actually, you may be taught? It doesn't say that. That's not well, true. Darwinism basically says we evolved from a lesser, a lesser matter. No, that, that's no, what I'm saying. It's not I so much a, a creation of, versus that's a, evolution. That's a distortion of, of it's creation the versus Darwinism. Evolution. What evolution looks at is, is how 
organisms change.